Hey, it's Mr. W. Glenn Wokenfeld from ScienceMusicVideos.com, and I am here, even though it's only February, I am here to do some Dainty Bio Review. So, this is kind of an experiment. You know that I do music, and you also have seen my lecture videos. You probably know that I have a website. What I have never tried to do is combine music with a kind of lecture instructional format, and I want to do that today. So, if you like what I'm doing here, then like the video and also leave me comments. Leave me comments encouraging me or giving me feedback if that's what you want to do. And specifically, um, if there are other topics that you'd like me to start using music to uh, do review, just let me know because it's easy enough for me to do that. So um, I am going to try and keep this to a reasonable time length. Um, so I'm setting my timer for 10 minutes and let's just see what happens. So uh, I've got my guitar here. And you know that I've got uh, a cell song. And the thing that I want to let you know about is this. Um, you know, the cell song is kind of like a ninth grade level song. It lists the organelles, but it doesn't do it in an extremely complex way. And so what I thought I would do is use the cell song as a stepping stone for me to talk about biology at the AP biology level and do some review. So again, if you like this kind of review, let me know by leaving me comments and um, Let's go ahead and do some AP bio review. I'm going to sing you a verse of the cell song. I went into a cell to get out of the rain. There was the gatekeeper, the cell membrane. I went into a cell and what did I see? The mitochondria, it's the energy factory. I went into a cell and said, who drives this bus? And found myself talking to the boss, the nucleus. I went into a cell to recover from a spasm and found myself swimming in some clear cytoplasm. All right, so let's go on a little bit. Um, AP biology. AP biology is to such a large degree a cell biology class. And as an AP biology student, there's a couple of important things to know. Of course, you know that cells are the basic units of life. But in our class, we've learned that there are two fundamental types of cells. There are the eukaryotic cells that are found in complex multicellular beings like ourselves, like plants, like fungi. And what defines us are complex cells, like, you know, this cartoony version of a cell that's shown here. What does it have? It has a defined nucleus, and surrounding that nucleus is a cytoplasm with membrane-embedded organelles. There's a lot of internal membrane inside these eukaryotic cells of which we are made. And there's also organelles like mitochondria. And mitochondria are in a class by themselves because our cells are not just cells, they're communities. And what I mean by that is that mitochondria are essentially, they're not quite independent living things, but they're cells in their own right that took up, the ancestors of which took up residence inside eukaryotic cells about 1.8 billion years ago, forming a partnership that shaped all life and made this conversation that we're having right now possible. We'll talk about uh, mitochondria a bit more in a moment. So another kind of eukaryotic cell is a plant cell. I have a video about photosynthesis. We can talk more about that. But plant cells and animal cells, for whatever their difference is, they're really close cousins. What's a far more distant relationship are bacterial cells. Bacterial cells belong to a type of cell called a prokaryotic cell. Prokaryotic meaning without a nucleus no complex internal organelles, no certainly no membrane-bound organelles, much smaller, much more ancient. Uh, prokaryotic cells have been around since the dawn of life, 3.8 or so billion years ago. Prokaryotic is kind of a bad evolutionary category. It includes two groups that are not closely related to one another. Um, those groups are the bacteria and the archaea, and our cells were actually formed by an ancient union of an archaeal cell that took up a bacterial cell. I'm going to talk more about that in just a minute. But for right now, you know, keep this distinction prokaryotic versus eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells, much simpler, but biochemically couldn't be more important because they did some unbelievable things like 
created our atmosphere and the oxygen with which we breathe right now. Um, so uh, I went into a cell to get out of the rain. There was the gatekeeper, the cell membrane. So gatekeeper, well, just here's a little shout out to my high school, Berkeley High School, and there's the big gate through which students enter in the morning and leave in the afternoon and uh, go out for lunch, and, uh, but not this year. Um, so anyhow, uh, gatekeeper, a gatekeeper would be positioned by the gate. We often have gatekeepers positioned by the gate and they determine who can enter and who can leave. So that means that they're selective. And that's what a membrane is. It's a selectively permeable boundary. And that selective permeability is, you know, essentially the basis of life. So in biology, the uh, cool thing to do on an AP biology level is to always take things down to the molecular level. So the basic structure of the membrane is that it's composed of the molecules that you can see here. These are called phospholipids. They're quite remarkable insofar as they have a nonpolar tail and a polar head. And when you mix them with water, they spontaneously self-assemble into a bunch of structures, one of which is a phospholipid bilayer. That's essentially a bubble. Imagine this just going in a complete sphere. And um, inside is water and outside is water. And it's a discrete entity, like a bubble floating in the air. But this is a bubble floating in water. And, you know, when you try and spin out scenarios for the origin of life, you have to account for the origin of cells. In some ways, that's not so tough because cell-like structures will emerge when you have molecules like phospholipids that are being produced in a high enough concentration in a watery environment. Well, in our cells, phospholipids are the basic structural molecules that make up the membrane. But um, by weight, they're often outclassed by proteins. And that leads to many of the gatekeeper-like functions of the membrane. So the phospholipids on their own, they're lipids. So they'll let um, nonpolar molecules freely diffuse across. They're in motion, so they'll allow really small um, molecules like carbon dioxide and oxygen to diffuse across. But polar stuff, ionic stuff won't get through. So in order for that stuff to get through, we have protein channels. Again, selective permeability is based on that, plus all the other membrane functions. Now, I have another entire song just about membranes that uh, I can do a lesson on. So uh, to end this <laughs> first verse of the song, um, this shows some of the ways in which selective permeability works. So, you know, a lot of stuff can't get through the membrane at all, but some stuff can. That's Polar molecules, small molecules, can diffuse right through. That's called simple diffusion. Um, there are protein channels that will aid the diffusion of other molecules, uh, polar molecules, for example. That's how glucose gets into your cells. And so that's called facilitated diffusion. And as proteins, these molecules can change their shape based on other conditions. So you have gates that essentially can open and close. Again, the gatekeeper. And um, you can also have processes where some of these proteins can be powered and they can pump molecules across the cell. That's a process called active transport. It's powered by ATP. Okay, let's go on. Let's learn a little bit more about cells. I went into a cell and what did I see? The mitochondria, it's the energy factory. So mitochondria, as I said before, are cells in and of their own uh, right, um, though they've lost their ability to live independently. You can't grow them in a petri dish as you might have done with bacteria in a lab. Um, how do we know that they were once independent cells? Well, this over here is their uh, genetic material. They have their own chromosome. Most of their genes have been transferred to the eukaryotic cells that harbor them, but they still maintain their own chromosomes. They reproduce on their own through essentially bacterial binary fission. Um, they have their own membrane surrounded by another membrane that's essentially a vestige of when they were engulfed by an archaeal cell uh, billions of years ago. Um, they have their own ribosomes. They send many of their own uh, they send their own messenger RNA to their own ribosomes to make their own proteins. Though again, much of their structure is now completely dependent upon um, the eukaryotic cells upon which they depend. Um, this is a scenario through which bacterial cells evolved into mitochondria. There is an ancient bacterial cell entering into an ancient 
our kale cell forming the incredible powerhouse of the eukaryotic cell. Um, it literally is a powerhouse. It secretes ATP. And you can see that happening in the next diagram over here. So this is essentially showing how glucose diffuses across the cell membrane. It gets processed to a small degree through glycolysis, a process about which I have a song. And then the byproduct, pyruvic acid, enters into a mitochondrion. And the structure of the mitochondrion is what um, enables pyruvic acid, the chemical energy in pyruvic acid, to be converted into ATP. And ATP is the molecule that powers all of life. Its, it's importance can't be overstressed. So here's ATP leaving um, the mitochondrion that enables your cells to do work. Um, the CO2 that you breathe out is uh, being produced right here. Um, and you also produce water vapor as a result of um, oxidative phosphorylation, which is what's being shown right here. And we're going to leave this for another video. So um, that's 10 minutes of review about cells. I feel like we just get started, but um, I want to end right here. And I just want to end with two messages. And here they are. So um, the messages are that, uh, you know, AP BioTest is coming up. It's a hard test. You have to know a lot of content. And you can help yourself learn that content by uh, working with my website. Now, if you're one of the thousands of students who's working with a teacher who is guiding you through you know, science music videos and the online curriculum, you're set. But if you're not, you should buy your own subscription. It's $29.95. There are tutorials on every topic in the AP Biology curriculum. You'll learn so much content. You'll feel so much more confident going into the AP exam. And you will do better. You'll do better because the more biology you know, the better that you're going to do. Another opportunity is this. Um, I also sell the Biomania phone app. It runs on Apple and on Android. Um, it's a system that has um, flashcards, multiple choice questions, and short FRQs. The flashcards will, again, build your content knowledge to an incredible, incredible degree. So will those multiple choice and FRQs. You really can't go wrong. So consider buying the Biomania phone app. Consider subscribing to my website. Please leave me comments. Please like this video. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks. I went into a cell to get out of the rain, and there was the gatekeeper, the cell membrane.